Hello and welcome to the third and final part of this three-part maintenance video blog series on installing the Raymarine T70216 pack. In the first blog I looked at the contents and I installed the MR Intelligent Triducer which is a combination of a speed and depth transducer. In the second blog I installed the Raymarine Short Arms Transducer and in this blog, the third and final blog, I'll be installing the ITC Transducer Controller and the i70 multifunction display. In the winter before last, I started tackling the spaghetti junction of wires on the boat and in particular behind the nav station and trying to make sense of all of the different uh, voltages and systems that were on board. I then rerouted the existing wires to a central switchboard. In the process, I managed to pull out miles of redundant wires which had belonged to old nav techs and weather facts and other old units that had been stalled in the boat in the past. So these are the wires for the BNG processor and the sonic speed transducer. The great thing about changing from the old NMEA system to the 2000 one is uh, I can get rid of all of this wire. So that's the, the sonic speed which I've got rid of as well. And that's the BNG processor, this uh, old Ray 240E set. This cable has been disintegrated ever since we've had it. <clears throat> Apparently you can't get the new ones anymore. So uh, I think we're just gonna have to live with it for the time being. In an ideal world, I'd upgrade the entire boat in one go, uh, but I haven't got the budget for that. So this is at least the start of that process of bringing the boat into the 21st century. So the first step was to remove the old BNG transducer controller and the Hydra 2 display unit and all the wires that go with it. I make way for the new Raymarine ITC5 transducer controller and the new transducer wires that go with it. get rid of just about all of these cables behind here now it's great so that was at least the old equipment removed I also needed to remove at least one of the old BNG dials to make room for the i70 multifunction display. So I'm about to fit the uh, new i70 multifunction color instrument display. The old BNG one, the hole is slightly smaller, it's about 10 mil smaller in radius. Um, so even though I've got the, the template for the i70, um, I've got no way of getting a centre hole in it. So what I've done is I've glued a little bit of ply at the back there, let it set overnight, um, and drilled a centre hole for the arbor to, to get the centre drill in, and we can cut another sort of 10 mil sliver off the outside. So hopefully it'll hold while I drill that. So the other thing I've done is uh, I've strung up a hoover to act as a dust extractor because those shards of fiberglass are really terrible you know they get all over the place and give you a nasty rash and get into food So we've got four screw holes here, so they're just out of line with those ones. I think I'm going to have to actually fill that in with a bit of gel coat and uh, re-drill them. If it was just a couple of millimetres higher, we would have cleared that.
I don't know why they supply these things with such cheap screws. I mean, it must be such a minimal part of the overall build. And yet it's so phenomenally inconvenient when it breaks off like that. I mean, look at that, it's solidly in place. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I did think about leaving the old dials in place just for aesthetic reasons really but then I kind of thought well the reason I was doing this was to get rid of as many redundant wires and systems as possible so in the end I just removed those as well. At this point I thought I'd better put the terminals in the system before I forget so that included putting one in the ITC5 unit and another one in the NMEA0183 converter uh, which is in effect at the end of the backbone. Then I needed to do the cable run for the backbone. Last time I was working on here I left a, a wire as a mousing line um, and I fed that through um, with some olive oil actually to help it slip through. So uh, I'm using that to mouse another mousing line and the actual backbone cable through. I don't know if you remember the uh, some of the past videos but this is the void which we found the rat in. So the conduit goes through there in the sailing void and then up to the nav station. So that's it, so that's the backbone cable pulled through and I've also moused another mousing line through. So I don't have to poke any more through next time. Then I needed to fix in place the NMEA0183 converter just behind the dials. So the old Autohelm Autopilot is uh, the SD7000 and it's still on the NMEA0183 system um, and when I tried to splice it in the ferrite was cut right up close to the wires so I've had to kind of slit the ferrite and slip it up the wire a bit and rescue the, the wires out of it and now I'm going to try and get it into the backbone through a NMEA converter so that's what I'm doing now but it's a bit of a fiddle. Wires in there that I could really use so I'm going to use those which I've harvested from the old system. I mean it could be any colour wire but I just like to keep it all the same. Um, save any confusion especially when it disappears behind corners and around conduits and things. Made my own conduit for it to put the individual wires through and now I've got to put it all back together. I've taken this redundant wire here from the ST7000. It's a black model not a grey model so it doesn't have the uh, C-Torque connectors at the top so it's basically a wiring job um, but what I've done is I've put wire in this conduit here and fed it up to where the dials are so I can join the connector up there I mean, ideally I'd solder them in place but it's, it's such an awkward place I can't actually get the soldering iron up there so I've had to move that ferrite up you can see there's a bit of a damage on that to get the wires out here um, I didn't need the live wire in the end so there's the other wires which I'll connect to the uh, NMA 2000 backbone. So here is, this is the uh, conduit from the SD7000 which I've got in here. So I've spliced the wires into a chock block here which then goes to the 0183 converter. And then that all goes obviously to the i70 multifunction display there. Then I needed to wire in the two transducers into the transducer controller. So the first wire to install was from the MR Intelligent Triducer, which I'd fitted in place in the first of these blogs. This had seven wires inside a single cable, um, and all of them needed terminals fitted, and then splitting into two and directing to two different parts of the controller, um, one for the speed and one for the depth. I'm just gonna put some heat shrink on there just to uh... Direct those wires a little bit easier once they're in the box.
and the cable needed fitting into a very small gap um, which I don't think was designed to take such a thick cable. Then before fitting the wind vane transducer wires I thought I'd better make sure that the controller actually fitted in place before I put any more wires in. There's the backbone going in there. I mean I'd never done anything like this before so the way I fitted it was in such a haphazard way that it made the editing of these blogs such a nightmare. So next I had to wire in the wind vane transducer wire, the transducer which I'd fitted in the second of these blogs. So once the terminals were crimped in place it was just a matter of fitting them into the relevant plugs and closing the unit up. So we're on a 24 volt system here and obviously this is on 12 volt so it goes to a step down transformer. So I've just fitted this on where the old B&G speed and depth used to be. So the live goes in there and then it goes to transformer 2 on the negative buzz bar in there. So this is my uh, temporary chock block to try and splice everything into the GPS. So we've got the GPS antenna coming in here. Um, we've got the smart pilot coming in on these two white ones here. We've got the VHF antenna, the VHF cable coming in here. And we have the c -talk connection from the chart plotter coming in here. This is like a temporary fix to try and get them all working together. Once I've sorted this out and I think it's all wired up correctly now I need to carefully transfer that into the junction box up here. Even though it looks like a complete rat's nest up there it's a lot lot better than what it used to be. Um, I've cleared out a lot of redundant wires there and simplified it a bit but obviously there's still a bit to go. And uh, I've got to say I hate dealing with all these different, I mean there's, I think there's four different systems even though they made the effort to try and kind of standardise it all they still try and kind of put their own little twist on it so hopefully you'll stick with their brand instead of moving on to another brand. So finally it was time for the big switch on and amazingly everything worked fine and all that needed doing was calibrating the transducers and now I have far fewer wires to deal with. Even though I still can't get the radar and the autopilot on the chart plotter it's part of the old E-series at least I've made the first steps into upgrading the system to the NMA 2000 system and hopefully over time I'll upgrade everything else on the boat as well. And um, today the wind's perfect from the north, so we've just got our big head sail up and we're going at um, nearly six knots, nice flat seas, it's really good sailing. So that's it for the third and final part of this series. I hope it was useful and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks in particular to our patrons who make these videos possible. Um, if you would like to contribute to my beer fund, then just follow the link to the Patreon page in the description below. Yeah.